Shalom, shalom. Dear ones, today I have a message that will really, really go under your skin. Because, you know, anything that will really bring change in our lives will touch us in the depth of our being. And I do trust that this message that I give you today will be a shocker because it will put the finger on every area in your life that you are not walking in the light. We, we discussed already that uh, it's, it's all about hearing God, you know? In every relationship, the main thing is the hearing and then the doing what we hear and the communication. And you know, when we read, study, and meditate on the scriptures, we receive this direction and instruction for our lives. If we don't read the Bible, however, we open ourselves to all kinds of different voices. The Word of God trains our ears and our faith so that we can distinguish between what comes from God and what doesn't. For many situations, God's will is so clear in the Bible that it would make no sense to wait for further guidance from Him. But at other times, God reminds us of a particular Bible verse that is just right for our personal situation. And I want to read, I want now to talk to you about the most important word in the Bible. And I give you now a second to guess what is the most important word in the Bible. You know, people will say love and all kinds of things they say, but I say it's the word if, I-F. If we do what God tells us in his word, then he will be faithful and do everything he promised. I guarantee you, God is looking for people that are watching the ifs. Now let's go to, to Deuteronomy chapter 28. I love that chapter. It says, if you will listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And you know, all the commands, now this is written for the Old Testament, but you know, even today, God wants us to listen to him. And it's good to know how God wants us to live our lives. Because Jesus put the whole law together in two laws. It, commandments. First of all, to love God with all our hearts. You know, we all should love God more than anything and hate sin more than anything. Then we're on the right track. But, but you know, if we have, uh, our society has become so selfish, so uh, arrogant, and we have believed that if we don't like anything what God says, we just make a new law and change it. And now we have the consequences. God is not a God that we can fool around with. What he says is the truth, and it's the truth that will set us free. So, now let's read here. And all these blessings, also if we listen diligently, not occasionally, diligently, to the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do, hear and do, all his commandments, which I commanded you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. <clears throat> and then it says, and all these blessings shall come upon you. God is a God that wants to bless us. He is a good God. He is a God who loves his children, but who is not willing to allow his children and go into destruction. All these blessings shall come shall come upon you and overtake you if you heed the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your beasts, the increase of your cattle and the young of your flock. Blessed shall you be, no, sorry, Blessed shall be your basket and your netting trough. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies rise up against you, who rise up against you, to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against 
you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouse and in all that you undertake. He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you. If, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus in, of prosperity through the fruit of your body, of your livestock, and of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord shall open to you his good treasury, the heavens to give the rain of your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. He will make you. We don't need to make that ourselves. He will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only, and you shall not be beneath, if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and are watchful to do them. And you shall not go aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. So, dear ones, this is now verse 14. So, uh, there are 12 verses that describe the blessings that God will shower on those that are walking in his commandments, that he commands. But now from verse 15, uh, back to verse 68. We have a description of the consequences for those that are disobedient. In verse 15, there, there's 54 curses. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. They are a natural consequence of our obedience. You know, if I lay my hand on a hot uh, plate, you know, an electric uh, fire, uh, fireplace, I cannot complain to get blisters. It's my disobedience to cause these consequences. So if we disobey the orders of God, the word of God, because he is God, not we, and he has created us, and he knows what is best for us. So then it says here, I, um, uh, yeah, command you this day, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your netting trough. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body. Dear ones, I don't want to read all these curses, but it is 54 curses. Which side do you want to choose? It's in your hands. I always ask my children in Africa, in whose hands is your life? And they usually, in the first time they scream, in God's hands, I said, no. It's in your hands. You choose with your actions the consequences. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness of mind and heart, in gratitude for the abundance of all which, with which he had blessed you. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies, whom the Lord shall send against you in hunger and thirst, in nakedness and in want of all things. And he will put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he has destroyed you. The Lord will bring a nation against you. I mean, it's up. I don't want to read all these negative things, but you read them. It's in Deuteronomy 28. And I trust and pray that the fear of the Lord will hit your heart and you will choose from now on to walk in the ways of God and get up in the morning and say, Lord, what is our plan together for this day? Because Jesus, you know, all he did, he only did what he saw the Father doing in heaven and he spoke what he heard the Father speaking. It's that simple. You know, when I came to Uganda about 25 years ago, 
<coughs> it was amazing because after a few days I said, Lord, where do you start and where do you end? This is a barrel with no bottom. I better go back to Europe again. He said, no, 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 Maria. You are not the savior of Uganda. Wow, I tell you, if we think we are so very important, God has redu to reduce us at this height with hat. I said, okay, Lord, so what is my calling here? He said, you listen every day to me, and you do only what I tell you. And I promise you, dear ones, it's a wonderful life. I, in the morning, I said, Lord, what have you prepared for this day? And then I walk in it. And looking back, I am shocked with joy what God does with that obedience. We, are just, we just need to be available to him. We just need to be, yeah, say, hey, Lord, here I am, use me. What is your situation? What, what do you want to, uh, to be done today? And then he gives the grace for everything that he has prepared for you, everything. So, dear ones, that is the question. Are you still running your own show, or are you available to the heart's desires of your God to bring, wherever you are, the kingdom of God? For thousands of years we have prayed now, your kingdom come, your will be done, and then we got out and did our own thing. Dear ones, our prayers need to reflect our, our daily life. So let us now come back for the first time, I think, as a, a whole world to seek his kingdom first and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto us. So dear ones, you can read, read through Deuteronomy 28 and let it go into your spirit. And then I want to read to you in Isaiah, it says here, um, okay, uh, in verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 16, but you can start up, uh, already further up. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Re re relieve the oppressed and correct the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white in s as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And now comes another if. If you are willing and obedient, then you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, then you will be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Dear ones, we have only one choice to joyfully, obediently, diligently listen to God every day. And when God speaks, I promise you, when he speaks, there is peace and joy in your heart. And then do what he says. And you will be shocked what God does with such an obedience. He doesn't want you to, your own ideas. He doesn't want to, you to, to be creative in your own because then it brings glory to you. God wants to be glorified. God wants to get the glory, and he can only get the glory if he's the initiator, and you do as he wanted. Dear ones, let us humble ourselves and not make ourselves big, but make God big, and that is true uh, humility. Humility doesn't mean to make yourself small but to make God big. And the bigger you want the God you serve to appear through your life, the smaller you get, I promise you. You will not be able to take any glory. You only can keep joy and gratitude for being used as a vessel of God. The Lord bless you and keep you, and I'll continue with that message because there's much more in the Word of God, especially when we want to see what went wrong in our, yeah, in this age, in this world. 
and why God gave us this call to repentance, why he put the handbrake on to slow down the whole world to let us see where we went wrong and where we need correction so that he can bless us again because he wants to bless us no end. And I do believe that those that are repentant and those that say, Lord, from now on, you are my boss. I am no longer telling you what to do. Because so many people want to go, in prayer even, you know, they want to advise God what he has to do. He doesn't need advisors. He needs people that are available at his disposal. Come on, join the army of people that listen and do what God wants. And the Lord will bless us no end. Shalom, shalom.